Hello everyone, and welcome back to Worked Heat Transfer Examples. Today we're going to look at another internal convection problem. Here we have an electronic circuit board that's sandwiched between two heat sinks. The circuit board is dissipating 50 watts of heat, and we're given the geometry of the heat sinks. We're pulling a particular amount of air through the heat sinks, and that's cooling off the circuit board. Our job is to estimate the operating temperature of the board. We'll make some assumptions, as suggested in the problem, that the flow is fully developed, the internal surfaces are isothermal, and the finish efficiencies are 100%. In the worked handwritten solution on the My Courses webpage, there are comments that are made on these assumptions. And if you're interested in those, you're welcome to check them out on the course webpage. So if we wanted to sketch out this problem, it would look something like this, at least if we're looking at one of the channels in our heat sink. We have a temperature coming in and a volumetric flow rate for all of the channels. We have a length of the channels. We know that the surface temperature is constant because we're assuming the fin efficiency is 100%, but we don't know what that surface temperature is. We know that there's an outlet temperature of the fluid, but we don't know what that is either. We do know that the electronics board is giving off 50 watts of heat, and that must be dissipated in our heat sinks. We know that these are not circular tubes, so we have to find some hydraulic diameter. To do that, we take four times the cross-sectional area divided by the wetted perimeter. We have an equation for that, and we can find that the hydraulic diameter in this case is 0 0.0097 meters, or 9.7 millimeters. We'll make some assumptions in this problem. We'll assume that the uniform heat sink has a constant temperature that's the same as the chip, that the fin efficiency is 100%. We'll assume that the fluid and material properties are constant. We'll also assume that the system is at steady state and that there are no losses to the surroundings. We'll follow our convection flow chart again, looking to understand the geometry and boundary conditions, determine relevant properties, find the Reynolds number, choose an appropriate convection correlation, and then solve for H and finish the problem. Looking at the geometry of this problem, we know that it's an internal flow, that we have constant surface temperature, and that we have square, or in this case, rectangular channels. We'll need to look at the entrance lengths, although the problem says we can assume that the flow is fully developed. And we have four Nusselt number correlations to choose from. We'll have to find out if the flow is laminar or turbulent. Next, we'll find some relevant properties at an appropriate temperature. For internal convection, the appropriate temperature is the average temperature between the inlet and outlet of the channel. Unfortunately, we don't know T out. So we'll have to find it. We'll do a first law analysis on the channels. We know that all the heat in from the circuit board has to go to heating up the fluid. Just like in the last example, we know that we need CP to find T out, but we don't have CP because we need T out to find T average. So we'll have to assume some average temperature. In this case, like the last problem, we'll assume that the average temperature is 300 degrees Kelvin, or 27 degrees Celsius. So we'll go to our table. We've assumed that the temperature is 300 Kelvin, we read the properties for air off table A.4. We find the density, the viscosity, the thermal conductivity, the Prandtl number, and the specific heat of the fluid. Now we can go back to solving the first law on the pipe. We can use our first law expression to isolate the outlet temperature of the fluid. Then we can plug in the values that we know and find 
that the outlet temperature is 27.7 degrees Celsius, just less than one degree Celsius higher than the temperature we brought into the heat sink. Since our average temperature is 30.3, I'm going to assume that my assumption that the average temperature was 300 is reasonable. Now we're going to find the Reynolds number. So I have an expression for Reynolds number, but it's given in terms of the velocity in the channel. I can find that velocity by dividing the volumetric flow rate by the cross-sectional area. Remember that the Reynolds number in this case is based on the hydraulic diameter because the cross-section of my heat sink channels is not circular. I can put values into my calculator and find that the velocity of the flow in the heat sinks is 16.67 meters per second. That gives me a Reynolds number of 10,174. That's larger than 2,300, so my flow is turbulent. But is it fully developed? We can look at the entrance lengths for turbulent flow and find that the hydraulic and thermal entrance lengths is 10 diameters into the channels. I know my hydraulic diameter, so I can find the entrance length is 0 0.097 meters or almost 10 centimeters. So both, both flows are developing most of the way, but developed at the end we're going to assume that we can use fully developed correlations as stated in the problem. Now we'll choose the appropriate convection correlation. We know that the flow is turbulent, so we don't use a laminar correlation. We're going to assume that the walls of the heat sink are smooth, and we know that we're heating up the air, so T surface is greater than T medium, or the temperature of the fluid. So I'll use this Nusselt number correlation with N equal to 0 0.4. Finally, I'll solve for the heat transfer coefficient and finish the problem. I have my Nusselt number correlation and I know the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number. I put this information into my equation. I find that the Nusselt number is 32.2. I use the definition of the Nusselt number to find the heat transfer coefficient. I plug some data into my calculator and I find that the heat transfer coefficient is 87.3 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Now I can use my heat transfer coefficient to solve for the surface temperature on the heat sink, remembering that we're assuming that that temperature is uniform everywhere on the heat sink. I know that for channels or pipes with constant surface temperature, I can use this dimensionless temperature difference is equal to this expression. I'm going to evaluate this at x is equal to L, or at the end of the channel, because that's where I want to know the surface temperature. I can put these values into my calculator, simplify my expression a little bit, and find that my dimensionless temperature difference is 0 0.76. But I don't want this dimensionless temperature difference. I want to find out what Ts is. So I can isolate Ts and find that if I put the values that I know into my calculator, that the temperature difference or the temperature on the surface of the heat sink is equal to just under 30 degrees Celsius. Gabrielle and Emily want to know, why do seagulls fly over the sea? It's because otherwise they would be bagels. Good job, everyone, and I'll see you next time on Worked Heat Transfer Examples.